What is going on guys, Fitcho here and welcome back to the Fitcho career. It is episode number 3 of season 2 and we're here in the Principality. It is Monaco, the crown jewel of Formula 1. And as you can see, we are a long way up the field. We're inside the top 10, well inside the top 10, up in 6th place. That's where we're going to be starting this Monaco Grand Prix. And there's two reasons for that. A, this is my favourite track on the calendar. I absolutely love this circuit, throwing it around in between the barriers is just so much fun around this place. And B, because Toyota have brought some big upgrades to this race, especially in the aero department. That being said though, we are definitely not the only team to bring upgrades, as this is now the start of the European season. McLaren, Renault, I think Toro Rosso, BMW Sauber have all also brought upgrades to this race, so the grid is a little bit jumbled up compared to the last race, but if we have a look at yesterday's qualifying results, Carlos Sainz has continued his run of form by getting pole position here in Monaco, but only by a very slim margin over Fernando Alonso, only three hundredths of a second over Fernando Alonso, so you can see those Renault upgrades are really paying off, they're going to be starting this race on the front row of the grid of McLaren, Stoffel Van Dorn is really not that far behind, only eight thousandths off Fernando Alonso, he's going to be starting out of third place with the Ferrari of Sebastian Vettel alongside him for company and he was only half a tenth off pole the top four covered by half a tenth of a second that is absolutely ridiculous in fifth place is Daniel Ricardo and alongside Ricardo is myself and we were only 1.17 off pole just over one and a half tenths off pole now we have Max Verstappen behind us so we are in a Red Bull sandwich at the start of today's Grand Prix then we have Nico Hulkenberg starting out of eighth place with Valtteri Bottas in ninth Antonio Giovinazzi starting in the last place inside the top 10 and Sergio Perez has been dropped all the way down to 11th his teammate starting from pole position so that is a very poor qualifying there for the Mexican. Toro Rosso's upgrades have really paid off here in Monaco. Pierre Gasly will be starting just behind Esteban Ocon in getting in that Force India Williams sandwich, so, uh, battle I should say. So it looks like that has turned into a three team battle. Just behind Gasly, you have both the Williams with Grosjean getting the upper hand on Verline. Then it's Luca Giotto and Daniel Kvyat. Then you have the two Haas cars with Charles Leclerc in 18th, with Kevin Magnussen in 19th, Delatraz in the BMW Sauber is 20th with his teammate alongside him. And then my teammate, Kamui Kobayashi, is all the way down in last place. So as we head into this Monaco Grand Prix, we are sitting in a very, very good position to back up that points finish in Bahrain and get some more points to our name. And we definitely have a great chance here with the upgrades we have on this car and how much I love this track, how good I am here. We have some serious chance at getting some points but track position is going to be absolutely crucial. Of course, it is so difficult to pass here at Monaco. So I'm going to have to go so aggressive on this first lap. That's the best chance to get any moves done and try and make up as much track position. Because after the first lap, the positions are generally pretty set here. Unless we can work something with the strategy. And speaking of the strategy, like always at Monaco, it looks like it is going to be a one-stop race here. Starting on the ultra soft tyres. Of course, we qualified on those tyres yesterday. And we're starting inside the top 10. So we must start on those tyres. Then we'll be swapping to a fresh set of the super soft tyres. It looks like around lap 15 or 16 and then going to the end we might have to bring that a lap forward to go for an undercut or even try the overcut that we saw work in the real life Grand Prix just a couple weeks ago here we go engage the clutch get the revs up as the lights come on got five lights and it's lights out and away we go the Monaco Grand Prix is underway and Daniel Ricciardo is already pulling across in front of us as we head down towards turn number one we squeeze around the outside of the other Aussies we're still side by side with our compatriot Daniel Ricciardo as we head up Beau Rivage for the first time in this race we're gonna have the inside line for Massenet but he's going right around our outsiders now into Casino Square around the outside of Casino Square we're still side by side and I've got the move done now up into fifth place past Daniel Ricciardo in the Red Bull is up next we have Sebastian Vettel as we head through the famous hairpin for the first time in this race as the yellow flags are out there's been a collision further back in the pack and that really doesn't surprise me that hairpin is a real bottleneck on the first lap and there's a really big chance of an incident there but we are sitting in fifth places up next like I said is Sebastian Vettel in front of him is Stoffel Van Dorn it looks like Fernando Alonso is sitting in second place and Carlos Sainz has held the lead after starting this race on pole position as we head through to back and the swimming pool section for the first time in this race and this is where I'm quick I know from practice my faster sector compared to the rest of 
of the field is the final sector. So I think Raskas is going to be a real overtaking opportunity for us. You can see just how much we have caught up to the back of Sebastian Vettel through that final sector as we end the first lap here in Monaco. Can we try and move up the inside of Sandoval? I don't want to risk it. I'm really not confident heading down into Sandoval on the break. So I'm not, I don't want to try anything too aggressive at the start of this Grand Prix. We still have another 38 laps ahead of us. And our teammate is in the pits, Kamui Kobayashi. So he's been caught up in some sort of incident on the first lap here. Through the swimming pool section on lap number two. This is where we really close up on Sebastian Vettel. Can we try and move up the inside of Raskas? Yes, we can. And we move past the Ferrari up into fourth place. And it looks to me as if Sebastian Vettel is struggling. We had a real train right behind Vettel. But in front of him, the cars were starting to pull away. Sebastian Vettel's thinking about it. Down my outside, down into Sandoval. But he thinks better of that. And fourth place is safe for now. But as you can see, there is a bit of big train. And that was forming up behind Sebastian Vettel as the front three have all broken away. And hopefully, I can do the same as what Stoffel Van Dorn is doing and break away from this train. We don't want to get un be under attack from Sebastian Vettel right now. We just need a breakaway, and I think we do have the pace. Our qualifying lap was good, but there was still a little bit left on the table. Oh, Daniel Ricciardo has some sort of issue with his car, and the yellow flags are out behind us in the tunnel. Disaster for our compatriot, and it looks like his podium streak is going to come to an end here in the third round of the season. I'm not too sure what has happened, but that seems to have held up a lot of cars behind us. When I get it, oh, we've got a VSC. And as you can see, like I said, that's really held up the cars behind us as Vettel is nowhere to be seen now. He's a long way back. So that has actually helped us in some ways. Ricardo running into some sort of major issue. And that's gotten us a bit of a breather from the pressure behind. And now we can focus all our attack, all our focus on attacking Stoffel van Dorn trying to get up onto a podium. Virtual safety car is ending. We're going over the delta a little bit there. Try to get a good jump. There we go. We're back to green as we head down into Portier. And that's not the best place for it to go green. If it had gone green for us just before Portier, we could have got a good slingshot off the corner. And Stoffel van Dorn wouldn't have had the best exit. We could have really closed up on him. But unfortunately, it wasn't quite the case. But I still think we have made a little bit of ground on the Belgian with that VSC. We are now within DRS range of Stoffel van Dorn. What is the gap when we cross the line? It looks like it is about 7 tenths of a second. We almost put it in the wall there going into Sandoval. So I was too preoccupied looking at the gap. But we are definitely closing up on Stoffel van Dorn. And if we can get past that McLaren, which I think we can, we'll be up into a podium place. We are really closing up on Stoffel van Dorn now. We just can't find a way past this McLaren. I think our best chance, like I said earlier, is going to be down into Raskas at the end of this lap as we have really stuffed up Massene there and lost a little bit of ground to the Belgium. And that's going to be our best chance. We don't have the straight line advantage over that Mercedes engine with our Toyota engine. And the, the DRS straight here, the pit straight, isn't really long enough to really make any sort of difference. So we're going to have to get... Very aggressive down into Raskas if we want to get past Van Dorn and up into a podium place. And I think we might have the pace to try and catch up and try, try to catch up to those top two, Fernando Alonso and Carlos Sainz. On to the DRS straight. Can we try it up the inside of Sandovot? No, I'm not going to try that. I'm just not confident enough on the brakes into Sandovot because it's a really bumpy braking zone. And I lock up there on most laps and that's not going to go well. Trying to go late on the brakes into that corner. We're just going to have to be patient. There's a little brush with the wall there at Massenet. And we haven't picked up any front wing damage. I was too busy looking at that. I almost lost the car going over that bump, heading down towards Mirabeau. Onto the pit straight we go. We've got the car in rich revs. We've got the DRS flap open. And we're in Van Dorn's slipstream. But you can see it just wasn't making much of a difference at all. We just can't get close enough to the McLaren right now. It's getting so, so frustrating. We lose a little bit too much time through this first sector to Van Dorn. And we can't quite catch it all up enough in time for a move into Raskas. And then the car is not powerful enough down the very short straight to try to make the move stick. It is so, so frustrating right now. I just want to get past this McLaren. We are right on the back of Stoffel Van Dorn as we head through to back into the swimming pool chicane, into the second part of the chicane. This is where I'm usually quick and we are closer than any other lap. 
we have been. We're going to go wide on the entrance, try to get the power down, stick it up the inside of Anthony Nodes. That's very, very aggressive. But we make that move stick, shoving the nose up the inside of the McLaren. And we're now into a podium place. That's what you got to do around these streets. You have to be so, so aggressive if you want to make the move stick. And that's what we were, and it's paid off. We can now try to chase down the two-time world champion in the Renault. That is Fernando Alonso and the race leader, Carlos Sainz. So the original strategy was to pit on the end of lap number 15. But these tyres are starting to go off of me. I'm starting to struggle, especially with the rear end, on these ultra softs as I have been pushing really, really hard. So I think I'm going to come in a lap early and go for the undercut, try to make the undercut strategy work. Hopefully that means we can pull a bit of a gap from Stoffel Van Dorn who is still right behind us and pressuring us and allow us to try and catch up to Fernando Alonso who has actually got the gap out a little bit over the last couple laps. Here we go into the pit lane at the end of lap number 14 one lap earlier than the normal strategy and neither of the front two have pitted and neither has Stoffel Van Dorn and to be honest the pit lane is quite quiet at the moment. We're going to be swapping onto the super soft tyres and going to the end of this Grand Prix. It looks like we're going to rejoin in possibly 7th, I mean 8th place for Sebastian Vettel is now going to go past us as we rejoin the race in 8th place. We're not going to be close enough to challenge Vettel there as the pin exit gets very, very tight. But now we have to absolutely push the hell out of this car on these fresh super soft tyres and make the most of fresh tyres for this undercut to really work. We are right on the back of Sebastian Vettel as we head up towards Raskast. I'm going to throw it up his inside. We don't want to lose any more time behind that Ferrari and get past him as quickly as we can. And we're absolutely flying on these super soft tyres. And there is Stoffel Van Dorn. And we should be able to get out in front of him quite comfortably as we have a little bit of contact with the wall. A little bit scrappy there as we're pushing to get, make sure we got in front of Stoffel Van Dorn. And we have so. And now we need to keep pushing for the next half a lap while his tyres are still getting up the temperature to try and get a little bit of a buffer between us and that McLaren. And there goes Nico Hulkenberg off into the pit lane right as we caught up to him. So he is not going to hold us up as someone else is in the pits. And we are now up into the fourth place. And it looks like Fernando Alonso up ahead has made his pit stop. But the gap has come down by a second and a half. And as you can see, we do have a gap over Stoffel Van Dorn. So our plan with the undercut has worked. But now we need to really knuckle down and try to catch up to Fernando Alonso, which is going to be very, very difficult. Oh, Pierre Gasly is out of this Grand Prix. Is this going to trigger a safety car as Fernando Alonso sets the fastest lap of the race? And I can see cars backed up on the run down towards Mirabeau on the minimap. But it looks like that is all being cleared now. And it doesn't look like that's going to trigger a safety car. Fastest lap of the race. That should mean we are closing up. So we pulled in, I think, six tenths of a second possibly on that lap on Fernando Alonso and he is battling with Carlos Sainz. Last time I looked, the gap between those two was only two tenths of a second. And looking at the minimap, they are starting to come onto traffic. So this is the perfect chance for us to get our head down and really catch up to the front two. It looks like it could be my turn in all the traffic as you can see. We have Charles Leclerc right in front of us and then there's someone else can't see that is the other horse of Kevin Magnussen but just in front of the two horses you can just see the light blue Renault of Fernando Alonso who is in second place in this race when we just slapped Pascal Verlein who came out of the pits very very close to us we just need to hope that he isn't going to try and get past us and unlap himself we're all oh, going so slowly what on earth is happening someone is parking the bus up ahead one of the lap cars is not getting out of the ways. We're now on the back of Charles Leclerc. Come on, get out of my way, Charles, as we head down towards Sandovot. Very aggressive, a very aggressive overtake there as he was not wanting to get out of my way, and that is going to lose me a little bit of time. As you can see, I've even dropped back off his the other half, Kevin Magnussen. Oh, we have two lap cars between us and Alonso. That's Oliver Rowland and Kevin Magnussen, and they need to be getting out of the way right now. They are holding us up. Get out of the way, Kevin. Get out of the way, Oliver Rowland. Come on. This is ridiculous. Blue flag, blue flag. 
Get out of my bleeping way as now I've had a double lock up. We're getting frustrated. We've cut that corner a little bit. And you can see they're getting away of Magnuson. What are you doing? Don't park it right there, Magnuson. Oh, that's going to lose me so much time as Magnuson has let me pass in a very awkward location. And now I've stuffed up the whole swimming pool chicane. And this is just losing me so much time as I still have Oliver Rowland to get past. As you can see, Fernando Alonso and... Uh, Carlos Sainz are starting to get away again. What is the gap when we cross the line? It has got out to 2.8 seconds now as we were almost in touching distance of them. Just a lap or two ago and Oliver get out of my way. Come on. Blue flags. Come on. Get out of the way. Blue flags. I am almost in your gearbox. Get out of the bleeping way. Come on man. Look how close I am to your gearbox. Get out. Pull to the right. Pull to the right here. No. Come on. Come on. Oh, now my engine's worn as well. That is just great. We've got past Oliver Rowland now, but the damage has been done. We can't even see Fernando Alonso and Carlos Sainz now. There they are. As we head into the chicane, they are already on the exit. We have 12 laps left here in Monaco, and the gap has been pulled back out thanks to that traffic. I'm going to have to work very, very hard to bring that back, and it's now out to 3.5 seconds. So getting stuck behind Oliver Roll in there cost me another second. We are almost within DRS. You can see how close they are now as we cross the line. The gap is 1.2 seconds as we start lap 33 of 39. We have six laps left and we are almost on the back of the lead pair. We are right on the back of Fernando Alonso now. We're in DRS range at the end of lap 33. We're about to start. Lap 34, there are not many laps left here in Monaco. As you can see, even down the straight with DRS, those two were pulling away from us. Our Toyota engine just isn't strong enough, and I think our tires are starting to go off. We're going to have to get so aggressive if we want to get past either of these two Spaniards in front of us. Through the swimming pool chicane, we're really starting to close up to the two in front of us. We're going to go for a wide line, get the power on early, sneak it up the inside of Anthony Nodes, on Fernando Alonso, we're up into second place, we're splitting the two Spaniard, Spaniards now, as we start lap 35, we have Carlos Sainz between us and victory here in Monaco, and I spy a lapped car up in front of us, that is Daniel Kvyat, I believe, in the Toro Rosso, the only Toro Rosso left in this Grand Prix, and depending when he gets in the way of us, it could help us or it could really hinder us. We are right on the back of Carlos Sainz. We're about to start lap 36. We've got rich revs. We have slipstream. We have DRS. And we're not close enough to that Tyrrell to make a move. As we have a little bit of a slide there on the exit. And that could hurt us. Lost a little bit of time for the run up Beauvage and towards Massenet as we go in a little bit deep. We just need to compose ourselves here. This is not where we expected to be in our third Grand Prix, let alone at the Monaco Grand Prix, the toughest track on the calendar. We can't let the nerves get to us now as we're on the back of the race leader with only a few laps to go. We are right on the back of Carlos Sainz as we head through to back and into the swimming pool section. This is where I'm strong. The second part to the swimming pool. We've really closed up on the Tyrrell. We're not quite close enough. We're going to go for this wide line. Try to cut back. We're not going to be close enough to stick it up the inside of Carlos Sainz into Anthony Nodes. They're about to start the third last lap here in Monaco. And Daniel Kvyat is still sitting just up the road there. And it looks like he's going to get in the way in one of these next three laps. And hopefully it works out well for us. We're right on the back of Carlos Sainz through anti nodes, but he's going to get DRS off Daniel Kvyat as we start the second last lap here in Monaco. A bit of a lock up down into Sandoval. We just need to stay close through this first part of the lap because we are so much stronger through the third sector. If we stay close, that gives us the chance to overtake into Raskas, but you can see we're already starting to drop back a little bit. Daniel Kvyat is right there as we head into the slow and tight section of the track. He could hold him up. This could work perfectly for us. Daniel Kvyat, where he is right now, if he just slows down a little bit more, gets in Sainz's way a little bit more, that would just be perfect. As Jeff is talking about fuel, we definitely have enough fuel to go to the end of this race. 
into the swimming pool chicane. We are very close to the back of Carlos Sainz. We're going to go wide into Raskas. Cut back. Get the power on. Can we sneak it up the inside of Anthony? No, the little lock up. We squeeze him out. We're into the lead of the Monaco Grand Prix as we're about to start the final lap here. And Daniel Kvyat is still in front of us. Hopefully, he doesn't hold us up too much and gives Carlos Sainz a chance to get back. But we only have less than a lap here in Monaco, standing between us and Victory as we go a little bit deep into Massenet and we come back across onto the racing line and just park the bus right in front of Carlos Sainz is now down towards Mirabeau. There is no way to pass through this section. It's so tight and slow through the famous hairpin for the final time through this no-name corner and down towards Portier. We need to get a good exit off Portier, possibly put the car up into Rich Rev so he doesn't try and move down into the Nouvelle Chicane because that is one of the main overtaking opportunities here at Monaco. It looks like we're going to be safe for this lap. Onto the brakes through the Nouvelle Chicane. Keep it nice and clean and now up towards Tabac. I am very scared about Tabac. Very, very careful. Give the barriers a little bit of extra room. Now down towards the swimming pool chicane where I am so strong we should be able to get a little bit of a margin up towards Raskas for the final time through Raskas. We only have Anthony Nodes left through Anthony Nodes. Put the car into Rich Rams to make sure he can't get past. We're going to come up to the line to win the Monaco Grand Prix. That. Oh, that is absolutely unbelievable to win the Monaco Grand Prix. Holy shit. Anthony, what do you think made the difference here? Without a doubt, the safety car changed everything today. The key to their success. Holy shit, what a race. I had to push so, so damn hard to catch up to those lead two, and I somehow managed to get past. I passed both of them here at Monaco, the hardest track on the calendar to pass at, both near the end of the race. I made that same move, the, the move I made so many times last season in GP2, going wide into Raskas, cutting back, getting on the power earlier, and sneaking the car up the inside of Anthony Nodes. That move just worked so, so well. What we learned last year in GP2, how to overtake here at Monaco, just won us the Monaco Grand Prix on our first attempt. Holy shit, what a race that was. So we have won the Monaco Grand Prix, our first ever race win. And the first win for Toyota back in Formula 1. In only my third race and Toyota's third race back, that is absolutely unbelievable. And we'll put a stop to Carlos Sainz's winning streak. But he has still come second in this race. So he will extend his lead in the championship. On the third step of the podium with the newly upgraded Renault is two-time world champion Fernando Alonso. And with that sort of performance from the Renault, he could become a title threat if they can keep it up for the rest of the season. Just off the podium, we have Stoffel Van Dorn, whose podium streak comes to an end here in Monaco, but still a fourth place. A very good finish there for the Belgian, and he'll get a good haul of points. With Max Verstappen just behind him in fifth place, with Nico Hülkenberg coming home in sixth. Sebastian Vettel has finally finished a race, finishing in seventh place with Valtteri Bottas finishing in 8th place, Antonio Giovinazzi in ninth place, then Daniel Kvyat, he just avoided being lapped there, and he came home for a points finish, a great result there for Daniel Kvyat. Outside the points, in 11th place, we have the hometown hero, Charles Leclerc, just missing out on points in his first ever home Grand Prix, of, uh, bleh, Grand Prix, of course, Charles Leclerc being born and raised right here on the streets of Monaco. Just behind him was Esteban Ocon in 12th place with Pascal Verlein in 13th, Kevin Magnussen in 14th, Daniel Ricciardo very disappointed he dropped all the way down to 15th place but he did have some major car issues at the start of the race and Jeff never told me he fixed them so they may have plagued him for the entire Grand Prix which is very very unlucky for our compatriot. In 16th place is Oliver Rowland from BMW Sauber with our teammate Kamui Kobayashi finishing just behind him in 17th. Place in 18th place is Roman Grosjean, and he has Luca Giotto just behind him. So, a poor, poor showing for both Grosjean and Giotto. I would have expected them to be a little bit higher up the field because both the Williams and Force India cars are better than some of the cars finish that finish in front of them, including the Sauber and possibly the Toyota. That being said, I did win the race.
race. So that Toyota is clearly pretty good when it's in the right hands. And Kamui Kobayashi is not doing the best job so far. But that being said, his role was never to get point, uh, score the points in this team. His goal as an experienced Formula 1 driver was to come in and help develop the cars. And the upgrades he has helped design have really helped this Toyota team. And the last of the finishers is Louis Delatraz, who finished in 20th place. Then you got Pierre Gasly and Sergio Perez, who both did not finish this race. So after the Monaco Grand Prix, Carlos Sainz continues to lead the World Drivers' Championship with 68 points. Stoffel Van Dorn is sitting in second place, 23 points back on 45. Third place is Daniel Ricciardo on 33 points, one point more than fourth place Nico Hülkenberg. Then you find myself all the way up in fifth place. Our win in today's race has skyrocketed us up in the championship standings, up into fifth place, only five points back off Nico Hülkenberg in fourth. Just behind us is Max Verstappen in sixth place on 16 points, and he is tied for points with two-time world champion Fernando Alonso. In 8th place we have Valtteri Bottas from McLaren on 14 points and then we have a 3 way tie for 12 points each for 9th place between Sergio Perez, Antonio Giovinazzi and Luca Giotto believe it or not and Sebastian Vettel rounds out the top 12. In the Constructors Championship Tyrrell continued to lead with a 21 point advantage over McLaren Mercedes. 10 points back off McLaren Mercedes is Red Bull Racing who are sitting in 3rd place and they have a 1 point advantage over Renault Sport F1 who are on 48 points then it's a bit of a jump back to Panasonic Panasonic Toyota Racing Us we have jumped up the standings standings a lot thanks to my 25 points in today's race we've actually jumped ahead of Scuderia Ferrari the most famous team on the grid who are sitting on a quite dismal 18 points considering they are Ferrari they have had a very very poor start to the season in seventh place you have Force India who have the upper hand in that Force India Williams battle at this stage and actually have double the points of Williams 12 compared to 6 and Williams are directly behind them in 8th place then you have Toro Rosso in 9th place on 3 points Haas F1 in 10th on 1 point and then BMW Sauber rounding out the field still with no points so that is all for today guys I hope you guys have enjoyed this video if you have make sure to smash that like button if you are new to the channel make sure you do subscribe thank you so much for watching I've been XFit Channel I'll see you all next time